Thank you, everyone. And I hope that you're really enjoying everything that you've learned today. Your brain is kind of like mine. It's sponged, and now it's full. And maybe you can get a little more in, and maybe not. But we hope you'll make it through another hour and a half or so, which is why I'm speaking to you now, because I'm like the housekeeper sweeper person. And we learned from our last symposium that we lost people at the very end of the day. And uh, so I get to do my shameless proselytizing for the National Association for Homeless Homestead Parks, as well as a little housekeeping bit. Um, you know, for me personally, today has been so interesting. As a child growing up in the 50s and 60s um, in a little suburb of Boston called Belmont, um, we had the great uh, luxury of living on a little dead end street and it wasn't all built and developed yet. And uh, my five brothers and I used to spend an awful lot of time outdoors and we had a woods behind our house that we could just go up past the next house and off we'd go. And they had a stream and we had the rope swing and we got filthy and gross and just had the best time. And my mother would lock us out and say, come back when I ring the bell for dinner. And that's what we do because that's what she told us to do and so we obeyed. And we just, we just had the best time and that was my childhood growing up like that. And I have uh, four sons and have had the great um, luxury of being able to live in suburbia and they had great yards and we lived in little towns that had nearby parks and um, they're just old enough that they could get on their bikes and go and you didn't fret and worry about bad stuff happening to them and stranger danger was not something that we ever talked about. But I do know very in a very real way that children today just don't have that kind of access to parks and you all have spoken of it and I spent many years uh, living in Detroit and working with Belle Isle which is a Frederick Law Olmsted Park that's an island, the only island he ever designed in the middle of the Detroit River and there are children in Detroit who are brought down to the park on water days they call it because those kids who live within two miles of the Detroit River have never seen the river and it's much like what other people said, the, the, young, the picture we had of that little boy this morning with his hat on who'd never been in the park. And it, it really is so important that, that we preserve the green space we have, that we make parks available, particularly in urban settings where these young children just aren't getting that kind of exposure to, to the fun that is there and you know rolling in the dirt and playing in the water and throwing rocks into the pond and, and seeing the lizards and geckos and turtles and things. And, and that's so important to them. Um, so I'm glad that we've had the opportunity to discuss all those kinds of things today. Um, to, today tomorrow's tours are all sold out, both the one for Stanford and the one for the East Bay Regional Park. So I have my instructions for you. Those going on the Stanford campus tour, the parking passes will be available in the lobby this afternoon, and the tour will leave from the Lee Kashing Center right here, the steps at 8.30 a.m., and you can start meeting here at 8 a.m. And if it's the same deal as yesterday, I think the parking is in a, a structure that's really a very short walk. Um, I don't know the names and numbers of the structures, but they'll give you those answers. Bao? Structure 5. So is it the one that says event parking? when you come past it, yeah, and it's very easy. It's like a five minute walk from there to here. And those of you who are going on the East Bay tour, that will leave from the Sheraton Palo Alto at 8.30. Self parking is available for $14 and valet parking is available for $17. So that's the information on the parks tours for tomorrow. I also wanna thank all our speakers who've been, I know some of them have been on their way and uh, I really, um, appreciate the time that they were able to spend with us today and, and so that we could learn so much about, about their work. I'm not an academic, I'm not a landscape architect, I'm just a community volunteer and in that public-private partnership, I'm the private person who asks for money over and over and over again, but we do pretty well at that. Um, so, and, and our sponsors, without whom we would never have done last fall's um, symposium and today is the National Building Museum in particular and today the East Bay Regional Park District the American Society of Landscape Architects, Stephen and Margaret Gill Family Foundation, and we thank the Gills so much for their support. Uh, the legacy continues with uh, Frederick Law Olmsted Jr.'s grandchildren. Keenan Land Company, the National Trust, PG&E and Wells Fargo, and the California State Parks Foundation, and the Save the Redwood Leagues, the American Planning Association. I serve on the NAOP board because um, of my involvement with the Belle Isle Park, and, and we, um, 
I helped shepherd the formation of a conservancy for that park a couple of years ago and merged four nonprofits to do that, which was like herding cats, but uh, and it took a really long time, and I almost lost all this hair trying to do it. But uh, at the end of the day, we did it right, and it's uh, up and running and thriving. We that park has now become a state park. If you you may have heard that there's a financial issue in the city of Detroit. Um, and so our governor thought that if he could take this park out of the city budget and put it into the state park budget, that would be a helpful thing. Well, no good deed goes unpunished, and it took a year and a half for that to happen. But um, people ask me, so how is that? And it's like the best thing that ever happened, because the, the uh, state actually has a little bit of money in its budget, whereas the city had nothing. Um, so that's how I came to the NAOP through the advocacy work I did for Belle Isle. And um, the NAOP has worked since its in, uh, inception in 1980 to preserve the Olmstead legacy and to be a resource for those who wish to preserve and revitalize historic landscapes and as well as it create as well as create new green spaces to build healthier more livable communities healthy parks healthy people you hear it over and over again when you are with park advocates and we're a coalition of design and preservation professionals historic property and park managers scholars municipal officials citizen activists and representatives of numerous Olmstead organizations we are um, Thrilled to have been able to bring some of Olmsted, Frederick Law Olmsted Jr.'s work to the forefront, like many of you. Um, I thought that some of what Senior did was actually work done by Junior, and some of what Junior did was actually work by Senior, but no man can work for 100 years and do 6,000 designs. So <laughs> it was the two of them who did that. So I encourage you, um, if, if the NAOP board would just indulge me for a minute, would you stand up so that we can just point out who is on the NAOP board. We have lots of our board members present. We'll have a board meeting on Saturday. Thank you. And should, should any of you others have questions about the NAOP and the work that we do, please be sure to, to uh, address me or, or the other board members or David Glickstein, who's been out at the desk uh, working all day long. Um, membership bro brochures were, were distributed at registration, and we're happy to provide more should you need them. And I think that is everything that I have to share with you this afternoon, except really uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for participating with us. And it's been a, a real pleasure to, to be able to listen to all these uh, presenters today and to learn so much about Olmsted's work in the West. Thank you.